Okay, so with that lead into, you know, basically uh, everything we talked about is technically just so-called Ritz method. Um, what happened to my? There we go. So the, the shortcoming of the Ritz method is that it, it, it's, you know, remember, in the, in the Ritz method, we haven't discretized anything yet, right? And so far, we've been working with beams, which are straight elements, right? They're not, but, you know, imagine, uh, you know, so it's not that far an approximation to assume that the, the displacement across a beam is some polynomial, some you know, just if you take a few terms of a polynomial and you're going to be pretty close, right? But imagine that I had a, uh, you know, some structural member like an oil derrick, for instance, right? And without discretizing it in any way, I want to approximate how the entire thing's going to deform with some function. Right? It's going to be very, very difficult to do that. You know, you might do it with a polynomial, but you're going to have to take like 100 million terms of a polynomial, right? And, and then, then it's going to be very expensive. So that means you have, when you do that minimization, right, you have 100 million unknown coefficients. So, so anyway, uh, you know, the, the difficulty of, of uh, the Ritz method is that it's difficult to come up with uh, interpolating functions for very complex geometries and other things. And that's, that's especially true in greater than one dimension. And there's really, you know, no systematic way of choosing them. And we kind of showed that when I uh, did the example in the video, I sort of chose them arbitrarily and I got something that looked very close to the real solution. But if we do something more systematic and say, okay, we're just going to use polynomials and take some terms, well, then I didn't get such a good solution anymore, right? I would have had to take more and more terms, okay? So this is, you know, this is where the finite element comes in. So the, the finite element method, you know, I say return to day one. I mean re return to day one of uh, of finite element discussions when I showed the, the the other PowerPoint slide. And so what we do there is now we, you know, I think this slide was exactly in the in that other presentation I showed. But basically we take uh, you know some continuous body and we break it up into little discrete elements, right? And so so today and and. In the sum of next class, we're just going to work in 1D, which is really easy. We have a line, and we break it up into line segments, okay? And those little subdomains are what we call finite elements. And then, basically, we apply the Ritz method on each individual element and then assemble them uh, into to, to see what the global solution is, okay? And, of course, in 2D, you know, we, we have some continuous domain, and we break it up into little pieces. And typically, we use uh, triangles or hexahedron or you know, quadrilaterals um, uh, in 2D. In, in 3D, you use tetrahedrons, little pyramid type things, or hexahedrons. Um, but in more advanced techniques, you can use arbitrary like polygons and stuff. Um, but uh, determining what the interpolation functions over those polygons are you know, an area of research, actually. So for simple shapes, we they have a very systematic way to do that. And so again, it's, it's nothing more than what I said. You may see me use different, I mean, basically, uh, you know, here I have phi j. It, it just a, this is just some function, right? It, I might use phi or psi. I mean, here I have psi. Earlier I was using phi. Later I'm going to use n. And you'll see that in the literature. It's, it's typically one of those three. You know, but it, it's just some function. So. We're going to have some number of functions uh, that uh, multiply by some number of unknowns uh, that are at now the nodes. So the nodes are the endpoints of the discretization. And this is what we're going to solve for. Right? So we're going to solve for the unknown displacements at the nodes of the finite elements. And then we'll assemble them. I think I kind of said all this. We'll assemble them 
uh, using continuity. So in other words, you know, if we have two finite elements, uh, they have an over, they have, a, they share a node, right, in one dimension. If we have two finite elements, right, let's go back, I guess. We have one, two elements, they share that node, okay. So in the type of finite elements, you know, the most generic or simple form of finite elements we're going to discuss today, we, we enforce a continuity there. So, which makes sense, right? The displacement, if we if we look at this node in isolation. And look at this node. Uh, I'm sorry. Look at this element in isolation, and we look at this element in isolation. Then the node there needs to be can, the same displacement, right? Okay. Otherwise, there's going to be a, a gap, right? And we're talking about the deformation of a continuous body. So. This is just how, you know, the kind of what system do we follow in determining those shape functions or the polynomials. Uh, you know, the, the approximation should be continuous over the element and differentiable. This is required by the weak form, right? We have to take a di differential. So we can't have a constant function, for instance, that's going to evaluate to zero. Right? It, it has to be differentiable. It needs to be complete. and and it should be an interpolant of the nodal variables in actual. So, uh, again, the shape functions will denote with one of these two symbols. And they have to satisfy the essential boundary conditions.